Uh, hey everybody, welcome to GMR, the only podcast whose schedule is determined purely by fate. Uh, my name is Randy Sunchak. I'm the editor of ElderGeek.com. Above me is uh, George. Hi, my name is George Weedman. I do a YouTube channel called Super Bunny Hop. And next to George is Matt. Hey, I'm also on YouTube and I do a show called Visual Review, I guess I can call it. We're on yeah. the YouTubes. We're all on the YouTube. We're all very we make, famous. We make tubes. Mm-hmm. Very famous. Like like the Chozo in Metroid Prime. <laughs> Off camera. Total fo- Biscuit. Mm-hmm. We spend all of our money and free time on making tubes. Uh-oh. Cutie pie. Yep. Just Small off camera. Small fry. Off of everybody's cameras, just to this side, there are like Scrooge McDuck piles of gold that we swim in after, when we're, you know, in between takes. That's how it mm-hmm. goes. Anyways, in less depressing news, <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what have we got on the docket tonight, Randy? Well, I kind of figured what, we'd what, kick what off. What cooked up for us? I, <laughs> I figured we'd kick it off and uh, talk a little bit first about what games we've reviewed, what games we might have been playing if we haven't reviewed it, and then uh, maybe kind of go into the topic a little bit of uh, the monetary value of video games. Um, oh, wow. That nebulous topic. Um, would anybody that, that like That sounds to- abstract. It is a little abstract, but I can figure to give us stuff to talk about. Um, Matt, why don't you tell us about what you've been reviewing? Because you, you just finished, like, your grand yeah. epic. <sighs> yes, I did. So I decided to do Dragon Age uh, 1, 2, and 3. Um, I was hoping oh. to get a review copy, but uh, <laughs> I, I, didn't, <clears throat> I didn't get a review, co- review copy. Uh, but anyways. A review uh, cough. Uh, yeah, a review, review cough. <laughs> So uh, I reviewed Origins Part Two, and then Inquisition, and this is the result. This 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 beard, you know, because basically I had no life for about a month, you know, just playing fifty-hour games. Oh my god! And then Inquisition was over a hundred. Oh gosh! That's that's so many hours. Think of yeah. all the money we could earn in those hours Let, let's not think about real jobs we could develop skills real jobs learn <laughs> languages <laughs> do our taxes volunteer at a, at a soup kitchen or at least at a yeah. animal shelter <laughs> but, wow, but instead the, the pressing we, turn we are very nobly devoting our time to entertaining viewers yes yes i also um i think I also did Sunset Overdrive as well. Oh, I didn't see that. Which a lot one. of people, yeah, um, that one that one was a good game. I didn't like it at first, but uh, it grew on me. For an exclusive, I don't know if it's something that you know buy an Xbox One. Yeah. Because Sunset Overdrive is on it, but yeah, it's it's a good game. It's fun. Are there? Does Xbox One have any other exclusives besides that one? Like noteworthy <laughs> exclusives. Like so, I don't know about like ex- exclusive like I mean you got the Halo Collector's Edition but that's that's for you know people who like Halo. And, I grew up with Halo so I got them. <laughs> it's it's oh funny gosh, how, it's how far so the tables broken. have turned. Like last gen it was the PS3 that had no games. This gen it's the Xbox One that has no games. Like do they at least well, include Talladega Nights or something? I don't know if the PS4 necessarily has games now. They have a lot of indie games. There's just if you want to look at the list now, we can look at the list, and it's but, all what, indie what, games. What artsy indie game does it have? Well, I guess it doesn't have to be, like, super-duper artsy, but besides, like, Entwined, I mean, what else does it do that a PC can't? I, uh, I guess Destiny's not on PC, but that's also on Xbox One, and that also didn't get reviewed very highly. <laughs> and then there was uh, The Last of Us again. You know, Metal Gear Solid 4 was going to be my system seller. I was going to buy a PS4 uh, right before that game eventually comes out, and I think I still might, Mm -hmm. but now it's scheduled to come out for PC. I don't know if it's going to be like a six-month delay or a one-year delay, but uh, either way, it's awfully tempting to to wait on that. Yeah, I'm with you. I think I'm going to wait for PC for that one to come out, too. It looks gorgeous. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, it looks I decent. can't wait for Bloodborne. I'm, I don't mean I'm, by I'm PC down. standards, That's... it looks okay. PS4, here we come. Yeah, Bloodborne. <laughs> oh, oh, by, yeah. by the way, like oh, for people Bloodborne. who don't know, I could care less about console wars or anything. Yeah, <laughs> just so play Bloodborne. I could really give two craps. I'm gonna have both systems anyway. Eventually, I'm just waiting for something good to come out on each of them, and then boom. There well, you go. that's so Bloodborne good will that be my out. system seller. Whatever good comes out of this will probably not be reflected in your bank account because. I went out this weekend and did console video game shopping, and I was shocked 
I was shocked and appalled by how expensive it can get. So I bought a Wii U on Black Friday. Like, yeah, that's right. It's um, the first day after Black Friday weekend. It is Cyber Monday right now for future viewers. Yeah. And I spent the weekend ordering a Wii U and going out to stores and buying a bunch of games. And even after heavy Black Friday discounting, I spent over $400 this week on like six items. And that blows my mind. Like, I don't think I've paid $60 for a year-old game, which is, in this case, Super Mario 3D World, ever. That's insane. And, yeah, on six items. and But that's, like, normal, because you can spend $400 on one PS4. That's what they were selling all Black Friday, is PS4 bundles for $400. There was a really good one that I think Best Buy had, where they had both GTA V and Last of Us. There, there you go. There's the system seller, mm -hmm. Last of Us and, um, and Bloodborne. And, Such a good deal. And uh, that's $400 for three items. And uh, if you pay $400 on Steam... <laughs> God, no, you would have just you're, an you're insane be, collection. If you buy a GPU, a really good graphics card, for like 250 or 300 and then spend the rest of that on, on games on Steam, you are still racking up like 16 items. Oh, easy. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. I just posted today, there was, I, I posted on my Twitter page, it was, uh, it was like the Call of Duty collection or whatever it was. It was like this disgusting long list of all the Call of Duties and all of his expansions. And I think it was only like a couple hundred. No, that one was 400 bucks. I'm sorry. Oh my God. Yeah, but like all of the Call of Duties for $400. Well, yeah, I guess by console standards, that's a deal. But even then, like... Yeah. I'm just, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, the list is disgusting yeah. too. I, I I would bring it up, but it would probably goof up my 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 action here. But literally, the the list in terms of Steam, like when you would scroll it down, you would see it, it was like, this is how many pixels big it was. So measure that in pixels. <laughs> that many pixels. That many pixels. <laughs> you know, on our tiny little webcam video fees, this is probably like ten pixels. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It was. It was literally. I want to say like a third of my. A third of my screen was just mm. title after title of just one Call of Duty game listed in what, what, all of its expansions. After which that. version of Train Simulator is it that has like the thousand dollar DLC mega pack, oh <laughs> where you can simulate all the trains for? <laughs> I will. I will at least make the argument for Train Simulator that it is the only Train Simulator out there. Whereas there's like a bajillion other shooters out there, you know. No, there, there. I think there are like three competing train simulators. There's, oh, really? there's, train simulator and trains with the Z. If I'm remembering correctly. Oh, hang on. Let me train let me do. It's actually a my most train simulator. My most noble Google search ever. Steam train simulators. <laughs> there's train simulator 2015. Train Simulator 2014. Same game. Railworks. That's the one I was thinking oh. of. Railworks. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. They compete. Um, the only I, thing I, I know at about least Train found two. Simulator. I at least found two competing Train Sim brands. Wow. So I feel justified. The only thing I know about Train Simulator is those videos that they do with MLG, 360 no-scope things. Oh, yeah. Where they do it. Yeah, hmm. where they go, no rails. It's off the rails. <laughs> and it's like going off the rails. That's all I know about Train Simulator. Holy crap. I mean, I've watched the... I'm sorry. George, do that again because you the low light in your office and your webcam. It looked like you were insane, like your hands were just flying. <laughs> I, I just got super excited thinking about the best game ever, that, which I have discovered since the last time we did one of these. It's called um, Game of the Year 420 Blaze It. And it's a Unity-made first-person shooter with all, like, pre-made Unity assets that is designed to play like one of those train simulator videos. <laughs> so as soon as you, like, left-click the mouse button to shoot your gun, it goes into slow motion and, and like, a gif of, of Tyrone screaming onto the monitor starts folding in from the side of the screen while Snoop Dogg's dancing on the side and it turns, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. heavy bloom on and, and like, <laughs> weed and dollar bills start flooding over the screen. It's 600 megabytes and it takes about 50 minutes to play through and that's because it's 600 megabytes of poorly compressed GIFs. That is oh awesome. Did this cost yeah. you money? 
No, it's it's a free 70 FPS game, and it reminded me a lot of why I had so much fun making that um, top 10 free games of 2013 video last year. Because there are like so many absolutely hilarious tributes to the stupidest pieces of internet culture out there that people are actually making games about. That's awesome. For free! And, only and on PC. I legit, I, I had so much fun for that 15 minutes, and, and mm, I, game of the year 420 Blaze It. It has the George Weedman seal of approval. <laughs> Are you going to do a video on that one? I should. You really Actually, should. Actually, yeah, yeah, I am going to incorporate it into a later video later on. Later on. Nice, nice. A project. Well, before we officially move over to George, Matt, did you did you uh, play anything else, dude? You did uh, uh, Sunset Overdrive, the the Dragon Age saga. Dragon Age. I I for Dragon Age Inquisition, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. I would say um I Definitely an improvement over part two. For people who like part two, don't worry. I I I'm not giving you the slip. All right, I'm not saying that you're terrible or anything. I'm just saying I personally did not like two at all. But uh, what a Inquisition controversial definitely statement. Yeah, I'm, so brave. <laughs> <laughs> I did not like two at all, and so and I said it in my video. Man, I I, did, I made it do a fatality. I hate you for um, saying that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I also the funny thing is I used uh, this clip that I got from George. Uh, one day George tweeted out a a fate um, an ending to Jax. Was it Jax of Mortal Kombat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I put um, <laughs> before, before the guy goes over the edge, I put the Dragon Age copy uh, <laughs> cover of Dragon Age Two on his face. So when he's walking off the cliff. And he falls off. <laughs> it just looks like Dragon Age <laughs> 2 is falling off the cliff. Yeah. But, yeah, you could blame George for that. Um, but, I'm yeah, so I, well, what did you think, Randy? To be, I didn't do my video review for it yet. I'm actually in the middle of writing oh. it. Um, but I don't care if people hear what I have to say about it now. It's it's fine. Um, I, to be honest with you, I think the game has a ton of problems. But yeah. I can't help but uh, think that this might be my favorite game this year. Huh. I really do. I think I, I think that it... Uh, it it did. It scratched all the right Randy itches: boards, swords, Ooh. bows and arrows, <laughs> dragons, spells. You know, big stories, huge environments. Like that. That was. It was great for me. But there was just so many stupid things that I think the game like did. the loot, constantly bending over. Yes. Oh my gosh! Like it didn't have an auto loot system, and it totally needs an auto loot system. I'm happy oh that they gosh. added a jumping system into, or a, a jumping mechanic into the game. But if you're gonna add a jumping mechanic into the game, make it one that at least works. Like, there were some little cliffs. I'm like, jump, 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 I'm thinking jump, about jump, that. Jump, I, I, I don't remember Dragon Age Origins, which is the last one I played, having a jump button, but I don't ever remember no. feeling the need to ever have a jump button. I remember feeling the need to have a jump button playing Knights of the Old Republic games, where there would be items where I'd be like, I could just jump over this little thing. Why don't you let me just jump over the little thing, game? But now that they have this jump, and it's like, great, now I can jump over the little thing this that's little in my thing. way. And it's a, it's a really crappy jump system. Hmm. And um, God, what else? Oh, and here this this is the this is gonna be one of the biggest beefs that I'm gonna say about the game is here's this game that for me my my playtime was 75 hours. Jesus, right? It's insane. Well, I think at the I mean, minimum, I mean, not that that's a, a, an objectively bad thing. No, I don't think it's a bad thing either. If you like yeah. it, you get more. Yeah. But um, exactly. But I think Matt, you were saying like 50 hours was like the shortest you could probably do a run through that game, <laughs> yeah. right? Okay, a fifty hour speed run. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of the main quest. So here yeah. you've got this fifty hour game, this fifty hour epic, you know, and then the story is just kind of slapped on you right at the beginning. They're like, "You came out of a hole and you don't remember anything. We're gonna get, you're gonna lead the Inquisition," <laughs> and it's like, "Whoa, whoa, wait a second. We got fifty hours here. Let's let's try a little bit of subtlety here. Let's let's." Let's build up a reason why we're going to have a have an Inquisition and why we're going to have it led by somebody who has, you know, a brain trauma. You know, <laughs> he's literally... Wait, wait a minute, but you don't, you don't become the Inquisitor until later. Yeah, but you still don't have your memory back. You literally have a... a you have, a, you have a, a reason to be in a hospital and not... A, not you shouldn't be carrying a sword, let alone making decisions that are altering countries. Right. You can't... This sounds like Dragon Age. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> in Dragon Age Origins, didn't you begin, well, depending on the origin you picked, like having to deal with some kind of traumatic event that causes you to leave your former life behind, which I guess is like waking up with amnesia because it makes you a blank slate. And then you don't become the Grey Warden until later on, but then that's the impetus of the entire plot because yeah. it takes no. a few hours to even start off. 
what what happens is that you you start in your origin, you get recruited by Duncan, the Great Warden, right, right. and then um, the well spoilers, uh, something happens, a lot of Grey Wardens die, like a lot of them, and and then you're so the it's Grey up Warden. to you and this other guy, this other Grey Warden, to kind of um, I guess pick up the pieces. So you end up kind of going around using the Grey Warden Treaty. There to was kind a of pick up the pieces. someone Except on Twitter. Like, you know, I, I wish I could remember their name. Like made a really long series of tweets, basically like ripping apart the the Bioware game storyline to shreds, <laughs> where they talked about how they're going to make a mature adult fantasy RPG about an ancient evil awakening. And and the political forces of the various lands not agreeing to cooperate and fight against it, thus causing one destined hero to unite everyone against the threats and take care of it himself, and uh, and how you can solve everyone's problems by killing whatever people are giving them problems, and and that was what made it dark and mature and adult. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. I didn't have a problem with the story much in Inquisition, which is weird, but... Then again, I'm thinking about most of the things I remember is most of my past decisions that were getting answered in this game. That part was actually and really well that's, done. Towards right, and that's what I'm thinking about mostly. I'm not really thinking about the main quest, so I can guess I can see where you guys are coming from where a lot of people didn't like the story much, but the gameplay itself was and really fun. And from addictive. from the little bit of reviews I did see, it looked like they actually implemented a system for inputting your decisions if you lost your save games yeah. where it literally walks you through mm -hmm. like a 30 minute long quiz it's which i'm gonna have to do if dragon i get Age it eventually Keep. it's dragon Keep. Sure. it's actually a website where you That's can go and put in your your stuff it's actually pretty neat and it's can you do that yeah. in game or do you have to do it online online but when you're huh. in the game it'll pop you on into the so does it like generate the save file for you when you're done yeah it oh that's it's cool on, it that's really cool. on the on the network mm -hmm. so I, it's cool. kind of like an incentive to buy the game like <laughs> almost <laughs> like it's trying to fight piracy. I didn't say this in the review, but it, it kind of seems that, like that way. That seems really clever, actually. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. like if the only way to um, to to get what you want out of the game is to like, I, I guess if if they are technically incapable of making the save file generator in their own engine and having to do it on on a server side thing if that's like actually a legit reason behind putting it on the internet that's that's a really clever way to get people to buy the game legit oh yeah and th and that doesn't sound like i'm sure it is I, I don't know like nowadays people are so used to everything having some kind of always online drm but it's like still a single player game at heart mm -hmm. even though i know matt has a story about, well, the about the multiplayer yeah uh well see <laughs> when i was trying to multiplayer out uh i ran into a few few guys um one guy thought he was just like the stuff like he was better <laughs> than stuff. everyone else okay yeah he had this big deep voice and he's just like oh he's like oh come over here come over here right now come over here <laughs> telling this guy to come over here could you hear him like smoking a bong and then crunching on doritos <laughs> i don't know in like, between like, every I think he was like talking to his roommate or something. He's like, "Come over here," and he didn't. The other guy didn't come over there, and he ended up um, falling down. When you when you fall down, it does does like a like a pickup system, kind of like Years of War, mm -hmm. and you have to revive the guy. So Far Cry Four has one of those. He's mm -hmm. like, "Oh, I'm not gonna revive you. I'm not gonna revive you." And the guy was like, "What are you doing? Don't don't be don't be such a dick." And I was yeah. like, "Oh, here it comes." So they start arguing. Ah. They're saying that their sausages were small and mm, oh, and all this type of sausage. stuff. Yeah, and it's just like, oh, um, what 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 end up happening is uh, he was like, he's like, oh, you probably play the crap out of this game. That's why you're so good at it. Or blah, blah blah, and he's like, "No, I'm number six in Call of Duty, <laughs> <laughs> modern, um, advanced warfare." And blah, blah blah, he's like, "You know, you know what you just said? You said that you're bad at a bad game." And then I put the <laughs> the joke at the end. Oh, 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 and I was just like, "Oh my gosh!" They just kept going at it, and they, oh my gosh, it gets colorful. It gets colorful, and that's that's just Xbox Live and. 
you know, it happened. It happened to me plenty of times on on Sony yeah. stuff as well. But I think like, no, it, it was happening anywhere. to me on PC too. Like it, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. Oh, wherever PC. there's an internet, there will be sausage festivals. Yes, you gotta love yes. the geek on geek hatred. You you played this game oh, that I no. really love way more than I do. Therefore, you're a loser. Wait, what? Yeah. you like this game too. Right, right. Yeah, they call it nerd. Nerd. I love, gonna, these are my favorite. What do you mean? <laughs> these are my favorite. I'm sure you guys have had plenty of, of people saying stuff like this, or you've read people saying stuff like this. I didn't like the game that much. I forced myself to play it a second time. And, <laughs> you know, and meanwhile, the game will be like Skyrim or something, or Fallout. I got Vegas. bored 50 hours in. Yeah. Worst game ever. Worst <laughs> game ever. I, I got bored after 80 hours of playing this game. It's wor not worth your money. What? Wow. What? Isn't wow. that the uh, the main topic? Sort is, of. Is yeah. how time may or may not be uh, transmutable into money, monetary value. Yeah, monetary value of video games. Um, I I was actually I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about this sooner, and I think this is all plays in perfectly because we're right now in the holiday season. Stuff is on sale. Cyber Monday. There's still time. Cy Cyber <laughs> there Monday. There are like three hours of Cyber Monday left. And then, you know, God, before we know it, Steam Winter Sale is going to be upon us, you know. And I guarantee you people are just going to be running sales like crazy between now and the new year anyway. Orange but, Tuesdays coming up. Uh, 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 yeah, pretty much every day this week will become a day. Yeah. Orange, brown, yellow, Tuesdays, blue, Wednesday. Magenta Friday. Shouldn't it be blue? What, what you got there? That a sun? What's, what's this that? is so. this episode of GMR is brought to you by Mountain Dew. Does anybody have a Doritos? I've... Is that really Mountain <laughs> oh, right, Dew? Right. Yeah, yeah, it's throwback Mountain Dew. It's made huh. with real sugar. It's delicious. Wait, what was it made of wow. before? Uh, highly concentrated fructose syrup. Fructose. <laughs> Ew. I don't <laughs> want that in my syrup. sugary sweet soft drinks. No, this, it is. It's Mountain Dew made with real sugar, and I, I love it. It's delicious. Because corn syrup is they... so cheap, why not? Yeah. I always hate when they put that disclaimer on there. Whenever you say it's made out of real something, you like, uh, you're not doing your audience any favors. You're just kind of admitting that it was not real before. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, that's why. That's why you gotta look at the labels, man. When you see something that you cannot pronounce, you know you gotta worry a little bit. Have you guys ever seen those wine coolers at the grocery store? They'll usually have them on the display and not an actual aisle, where it'll say like, I don't know, Crystal Light wine cooler, and then underneath the tagline says, "Alcohol is in it." <laughs> no, I've never Do you seen know those? those? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, maybe we have them in Georgia. I don't know, but but oh, they are no. the most hilarious packaging you have ever seen in your life. Oh, that's another thing I get to do during Thanksgiving is go out in stores and watch TV and stuff. But there's a commercial going around the te the TVs now about a product that's an electric s dead skin shaver. What? <laughs> Where you what? swipe it across like the bottom of your foot or your elbow or something, and it shaves the dead skin. Dude. <laughs> what about the hair? Does it shave just, the uh, hair too? I, I don't know. It's it's in the commercial. They showed a lady using it. Now, you know, ladies aren't supposed to have hair. That would be dumb. So, <laughs> this product. <laughs> right. <laughs> this, this product is it's like a little electric razor that this lady scraped across her foot. And you saw like a little little shrinkle of of like digitized skin flake oh, particle effects falling down creepy. the screen. That's it was hilarious. Anyways, video games. Anyway, video games. <laughs> it's 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 amazing and terrifying whenever I go to my relatives and like see what pop culture is like again it is funny i don't like watch much tv and unless i go over to visit no. somebody and then it's people like, who play video games don't watch tv i've noticed when i watch tv with my wife i will laugh my butt off at commercials and she's like mm -hmm. it's like i'm watching television with someone from another planet because you've never seen this stuff you, like, you really yeah. like grow sensitized to it you don't mm -hmm. grow decent it's the opposite because after staying away from it and going back it's it looks weirder and and you notice it uh hitting you harder and and I, I, who who is the market for the electric dead skin shaver? <laughs> I kind of want to get one. Do they it. not take baths? <laughs> I just I just want to get one now. Is it like a joke to like send to somebody? And be like, you really you need G this. Give it give it a <laughs> gag. We'll, we'll we'll send it. Just, we should both buy get the some and send it for to men. Matt. They have one for men. Yeah, it, it's like the, the commercial. Shake weight like, of the guy has like products. abs and he's swole. then why does he need he's a shake like, weight? Oh, you're not gonna yeah. lose weight shaking a shake Woo! weight. 
you know and you're just gonna be reliving your fantasies right right <laughs> i don't even get how it i don't know like i'm not a fitness expert i ride bikes i run but i don't use a shake weight Video I, games. I feel like I shouldn't either. Yeah, <laughs> video games. So. Wait, you, we, we, How about those video connect. games, guys? So I, I want to ask you guys a question. Like, actually, yes, kind of yes. trying to steer this crazy train back onto the onto oh, the rails. Right. Um, I, I mean, we all still buy games. You know, aside from the ones that we're reviewing. Sometimes, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll still buy games that are reviewing. When was the last time you paid full price for a game? For for like self enjoyment this weekend oh real oh that's okay oh, yeah yeah that's right yeah yeah because because I had oh. to I, I mean I can't just get a Wii U and have no games for it and all the good Wii U games came out in the past year or so except Wonderful One Hundred One I can't wait to get that and Zombie U but uh, those are like the only two Wii U games that are decent that are like actually have dropped in price at this point yeah like it's just amazing how much slower the price depreciation of console games is compared to PC games yeah it's really kind of weird because now you know um. When it comes to like brand brand new games, I don't pay full price for them anymore. No, like, and you, and you like really shouldn't. Like none. Like of only them. super duper hardcore fans even have an excuse. Everyone else, like, just wait. Seriously, it's not that hard. Just wait like two weeks. A sale will pop up somewhere. Mm -hmm. Three months down the line, the base price of it will go down, even if it's not on sale. Even if it's and it it doesn't even matter like the quality of the game. Like, um, it's, it's for just, instance, just a video game. Just wait. Yeah, just 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 wait for all of them. Like with um, Shadow of Mordor. I'm I'm really excited to play it. I promised myself that I wasn't gonna play it until I was done with one of my and, side and, video and projects. That's still new. It's still gonna feel cutting edge when you play it. It came out like last month. Came out something. last month, and I got it for like thirty five bucks on steam or something like that which is probably yeah. the, the evil... most i paid for a, bra a new game 35 bucks the evil within is 16 dollars now on on green man game no gamers gate oh, gotta no. remember the s right um <laughs> if you use a promotional code and that's crazy it, it, that, that's also new brand new game. 16 bucks matt you you might be a little bit different because you primarily play console I... games yeah um, no, I I always play PC. Oh, I've been, been getting back really into console games. You just reviewed the Sunset Overderp. Yeah, and didn't you but, do Dragon but I'm Age trying on? to branch out a bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to. Trying I was to, at your house playing Killer Instinct dabble. like a month ago. Well, I just got like I just got an Xbox. I I decided mm. to get an Xbox first. Yeah. Is, you know, since my friend had you decided an to Xbox. make the downgrade. Oh, yep, yeah, exactly, exactly, because consoles are definitely a downgrade, let me tell PC you. PC Master Race. I was Race. playing Battlefield 4, and I'm like, man, I want to play on PC. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? What is this? But I decided to get uh, Rayman Legends uh, and another oh, yeah, controller. Oh, we, yeah, we played that, too. It was fun. It's a very fun game. Mm -hmm. um, because I absolutely love Origins, and this is just a fantastic game. Mm -hmm. But it I is mean, on PC. Wow. It's also but on a PC. good example of waiting is this game. Mm -hmm. Hey, okay? bro, Master Chief. Master Chief. Wait. Color, color Don't buy version. this. <laughs> because then you get, like, it's, it's the same thing what happened to Battlefield 4, where the game was broken for a year, mm -hmm. and they finally fixed Battlefield 4. Can you believe it? They finally fixed it. And, like and Hardline's going to come out in like six months. And the players and I'm not going to do that. They they all just might, they'll they'll all migrate, regardless of how good the game is. Well, after actually, after the beta, they said they did want to drastically rethink a few things. And so they delayed it six months, mm -hmm. which I think is a respectful decision. Um, but let's see. I was going to say something incendiary. And oh, yeah. Um, if you guys have been reading the news today, there was a um, Microsoft's now offering a rebate for new Master Chief Collection purchases where you get 15 Microsoft dollar fun bucks along with your game. Fun bucks are coming back. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I mean, 15 real bucks would be better, but yeah. I guess it's still some 15 Microsoft what? store or, fun bucks. Or just or drop the price of the something. game. Just drop the or price. just drop the price. That's the same as getting 15 fun <laughs> real bucks. Yeah. Just dropping the price just of the game. The price of the game. Admit that you broke the game and drop the price. Of well, you know, to tack that on with that is um, <laughs> Ubisoft with Assassin's Creed Unity, because they were, you know, catching so much flack with all the problems with that. Anybody who purchased the DLC or the season pass, which again I think season oh yeah, pass they is, got some kind of redemption, I guess. Everybody who paid for the season pass, I think they got a chance to get like a free Ubisoft game. I, I I'm not a hundred hundred percent certain on that, mm. but I'm pretty sure a lot of people were trading it in to get like Far Cry Four and crap like that. But season Far Cry is, Four, I'm impressed actually with how okay you made a big point in your um 
video about the stuttering issues, mm -hmm. but I think I just have a high tolerance for that. Like I had a really weird black screen crash once it started up, but somebody else I, had mentioned the black screen. I was screen thankful problem. how well it ran actually. Yeah, somebody else had mentioned the black screen problem and I was like, I didn't know there was a black screen problem. It depends on your mouse. Yeah. I, I kid you not. If your mouse has more than four buttons, the game gives you a black screen until you go into device manager and make it pretend that your mouse is Wow, there. that's crazy. That's Dark crazy. Souls one did the same thing with me and ever since then it's been like part of my standard issue troubleshooting if i ever get one and like how the hell do they miss some of this stuff i don't know like they must have a yeah they they have an infamously small qa department if you yeah. look at the credits of these ubisoft games there's so many names involved except for the like six who yeah. were in the qa department but and that explains a lot but that also goes into like ubisoft games in particular these ones are the worst ones i i still enjoy a lot of ubisoft games i like open world games and i like stealth games so therefore they kind of have a habit of making games that i enjoy but them in particular more than i i want to say any other company out there within six months their games will be probably half price i guarantee you that's, this that's this good, christmas that's good for me yeah it's great for everybody it's great for consumers if you can it's wait it's not great for them yeah well i, I think that they're and, and i'm okay with that i guess me too they're, they're banking so much on people buying those brand new games like right on release that it's kind of it's kind of a little scary for them because like that's how they make their money i guarantee you this christmas every game that except for i'm gonna say except for unity and far cry 4 i'll bet you almost the entire ubisoft library if it's on sale on steam will be for five bucks or less for wow. the christmas sale. I, I can almost guarantee it black flag i'll bet you it'll be five bucks all the other Assassin's Creed's, they'll probably bundle those together for like 15 so, bucks or something so just like the games from last year and earlier yeah just one year. Jeez. One year. And then, you know what? That gives everybody an excuse to just wait and see for, like, all the reviews to come out, to hear if their friends liked it or not, to, for them to patch problems that might right. be patchable. Plus, That's the best way to play Bethesda games, too. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> Plus, Black Flag is the one people actually liked. Yep. Yeah. It is It is the the more highly uh, I, 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 Assassin's I think Creed. I think this one. might be the first Assassin's Creed that I just kind of just don't play. Oh, honest. that's because the, the Desmond really, story. Yeah. All Desmond of story just, for me. Yeah. It's it's. I mean, like, I mean, like the the you know the real world and the the mm. anim anim animus you, animus animus right. Animi. the, the animus it, it, the, it's, the animus no intertwined <laughs> thing going on anymore. So everyone just wants the Assassin's Creed stuff. I mean, I could totally understand why, but that's what gravitated me towards Assassin's Creed. That's what I wanted from Assassin's Creed. That cool and it sci -fi never delivered story. because the majority wanted, just did not care about this. wanted Desmond. a big, wide animus plot <laughs> that would just um, shove the animus into the game so hard. You're a horrible person. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well there you go there you go end of show thanks everybody catch y'all later <laughs> anyways you were talking about how much you love animuses yeah yeah well yeah i just i just i i don't think i will be uh playing assassin's creed yeah you, you played it randy i did right you you I play liked, unity you kind of liked it i did i liked unity a lot and and what's and and what's funny is I uh, – here's another reason why you should even wait because, like, everybody was like, ah, oh, the PC version is broken, and I have all the other Assassin's Creed games on PC, and I prefer to play them on PC because even the original looks insanely better on PC. And yeah. so um, my wife gave me a new video card for Christmas, and with it came Aww. a free game. And so oh, I got Christmas. Um, yeah, Christmas is uh, um, later. I'm an old man. It doesn't really matter when it happens. It's just that <laughs> it's it, married. It's, you can get away with that. It. Was that's my present. I'm going to remember on Christmas morning. I'll be yeah, thanks, honey. Like, you're great. you're gonna turn on your computer and say thank you. What a it's, what a pleasant surprise. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> this is wonderful. But uh, so I got Assassin's Creed Unity with it, and um, it was probably a week, I guess, or so after the game came out. After they did like three patches to the game, and I fired it up and played it. And uh, the first, the first little bit of it, I was like, "Oh yeah, I can definitely see some of these problems. Like cutscenes were all stuttery yeah. and stuff." But then I stopped playing the game for a little bit and picked it back up again after they did another patch. 
all the cutscenes stopped stuttering. The game actually flowed at, like, I was holding a steady 45 frames per second through everything. I wasn't getting anything higher than that, but still. That's such a pleasant surprise. But 45 <laughs> is still pretty good. I think 45 frames per second is pretty good. It's like coming I, I, back I, to a table and finding your food there. Exactly. I or or go or putting on a jacket that you haven't worn in a year and there's a five dollar bill in there. Yeah. Because I found it weird that your review you didn't say anything about all these crazy things I was looking on Twitter about like oh the eyeball shot that everyone right. tweets <laughs> out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, again, I wish I got those kind of errors because that was just man that was clickbait right there and and. It, it might be <laughs> Ubisoft reverse psychology where they lower your standards at the beginning of your time with the game <laughs> so that you can be more surprised later on when it works a bit better than when it started out. You know, despite the problems with Unity, it's a pretty good game. <laughs> 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. 10 Point out of 10. Buy it with a credit card. <laughs> <laughs> With the game, with the the GameStop official Power Play credit oh, card, gosh. do they have such a I, thing? D- Please tell me they don't. There yeah, was a story yeah, a few months ago about them rolling it out. Did they actually do it? I don't know. I haven't. Yeah, been, they do. Uh, I was at a midnight release, and they oh man, before the midnight le- release, the manager gets up and he's like, "Oh, uh, before we start, we do have a credit card." Blah blah blah. And he was explaining oh, no. all this stuff, and I'm like, "Oh, those poor people no. who fell for it." Oh. No, uh, I, everyone uh, was just like on their phones. You know, you know how antisocial gamers are. You know, <laughs> what? Yeah, what was that? <laughs> was that? Was that? Any? I, no, I'm not going. Anyway, I'm, um, I'm a very social guy. I'm the opposite. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah they, they, they weren't paying attention. I don't think okay. anyone did it at all. No, Good, because that sounds. Uh, but you know, like the one person who does is gonna make them a bunch of money, and is gonna lose a bunch of money. But what I did get at GameStop, which, like, wh- they did a raffle, right, when I was picking up, uh, I think it was Inquisition. Um, the reason why, like, I love physical cop- physical copies. Mm-hmm. I can't do without physical. them. And I, I should have I ordered the PC version earlier so I can actually get a physical copy of the PC version. But it feels like it has value. The console games have value. I could trade this back in, even though I never trade in games. Yeah. Um, because, you know, that's just but There are, like, terrible. resources <laughs> of the world that got processed into the disc in the box. But but I won this thing on a ra- raffle, and people were like, and they were like, where's your enthusiasm? I was like, yay. I'll show you guys right now. <laughs> Dude, he has a nice chair. He reviewed that chair. Did he? I, I want to go. I in. think that chair is... A- <laughs> <laughs> I bet your wife loved that one. He was snuggling with oh it. Oh my god! He just cuddled with it. Oh yeah, it's it's like like bringing home the leg lamp. <laughs> yeah. So I got Christmas that uh, Grand Theft Auto PS4 like oh no stand thing. Oh oh boy, they were gonna throw that away anyway. <laughs> right, right, right. So I was like, you know what? I'll get it. You know, because I'm moving into another place soon, and I'm gonna have some space for it. So I, I'm thinking of putting my face onto. The girl's body. The bikini so body. The, people the bikini come girl. in, they look at the girl's boobs, and then they look and then up they look and they, at they the see face. my face. They see your beard and, and they're face, like, yeah. wow, yeah. Matt, you've really been working out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been working you're, out my chest a lot, apparently, you know? You've been taking care of yourself, Matt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, we all know what, you know, people, what gets you views on YouTube, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, it's it's all the thumbnail. still work. Yeah, the thumbnails, still work? the thumbnail trick. Yeah, I do it all yeah, the time. The, the thumbnails still work. <laughs> I do it all the time. I do it all the time. No, no, shame. no. That's just that's just like <laughs> except that's the default way to make a thumbnail. I have a template, a Photoshop template. Yeah. Where where I have some art from the game, the title, the, the all like stylized. Just for a the pair of boobs. Font. Just like no, I, I have a few layers of boobs. Depending on the game, mm-hmm. I'll I'll pick which layer I want to enable, and there you go. Yeah. Perfect every time. Mm-hmm. Every time. There's a pair of boobs. People love it. The kids love the boobs. <laughs> the kids love them. Okay, anyways. So back to the value. The video game. The value, the value, of, yes, video the value game. of of, of video games. So do you, I mean, do uh-huh. you think do you think this is like a problem that so many games are dropping in price so quickly or like I do. Yeah? I No. I mean, I'll be honest. I think that the market is f- super flooded at the moment. Like just beyond flooded. 
Like it, it, it that that might be a huge problem later on, but right now, if we are like on the midst of a bursting bubble, we're at least like, if not at the the curve where it starts to flatten, like before that curve. Yeah. Yeah, I, I could agree with that. And then when companies go under, and some of the big companies will go under because the the bubble will eventually burst, people are going to be crying and be like, oh, do you remember when we used to have Call of Duties almost every year? You know, it, it's going to happen. You know, there, there's going to be the remember whens. Well, I don't know if, like, the big annualized mega-budgeted games will go out soon, but what I see happening is... um the value of, of everyone else just kind of like the perceived value of everyone else's games going down the toilet mm-hmm. because of the pervasiveness of what we were just talking about, which is Steam sales, like the incredible juxtaposition of how much cheaper games are there compared to anywhere else. And um, there are a few things I want to cite. Um, one is a blog post by Puppy Games that they wrote way back in mid-August. It was very much a um, like precursor to a lot of the like weird angst that happened when when Gamergate broke out. But it was a blog post about um, how much they cannot spend anymore on um, on support, on customer support, because their games are $5 now as opposed to being $15. Even if they, like, make the same amount of, of volume in sales, they're still getting less for it, which means that they can't put as many resources towards things like customer support. <laughs> and they're really mad about it. Whoever wrote it they the, the headline is called because you're worthless colon the dark side of ndpr one. yeah yeah and um it, it was all about like how their typical customer nowadays compared to 10 years ago and maybe this has a lot to do with nostalgia kind of coloring it is not only like less appreciative of their games but also less of a literally valued customer because their games now are valued less than they were before because people expect to pay less that's somehow the 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 idea of this um blog post is that because people are used to paying less for games now they're used to valuing them less Mm -hmm. which which i mean makes sense mathematically (laughs) i i don't know but also um emily rogers who writes for nintendo force um is is tweeting about a developer she was interviewing today, which is Cyber Monday. On uh, she's working on a story from um, about a Wii U eShop developer who I assume is going to be one of the smaller um, developers who said, "quote The problem is people expect sales, so they don't buy software at launch." End quote. I'm interested to see if this does become a story that she'll be publishing because I'm always interested in hearing about the dark side of what us consumers would otherwise think is a really cool thing, which is games getting really, really super cheap. Mm -hmm. But I can easily imagine why a lot of developers or just like economic analysts would, that would scare the shit out of them. Uh, Yeah. And it it really should scare the shit out of them too. And it should even scare, like for us as consumers, super, super cheap video games sounds awesome. But in terms of like a thriving gaming uh, industry, super, super cheap games is actually va- very, very bad, you know, because then it is going to do result in stuff like cutting out Q&A, you know, departments, um, whereas they'll be and, like... And, and I, f- I feel like we'll have to see because like right now the PC architecture is so standardized. Mm-hmm. I mean, not really, not nearly as compared to um, console you know, platforms, but like ever since 2007, I think it was like games just started working (laughs) for me. I remember having to jump through way more hoops before something happened around 2006 or seven that just like all of a sudden made the need for customer support and QA be less important as before. Like even as much shit as we're talking on about big budget, triple A Ubisoft games, not having as much QA um going into them there's still like so many other cheap super cheap games competing with them that customers aren't really they're spoiled with choice Mm -hmm. so um what how much value is there really in investing in qa and customer support yeah why not just fix the problems that people are going to be complaining about instead of trying to find the problem in the first place you know um yeah and you know and it's not just it's not just not that we're here to beat up on Ubisoft, though we could beat up on them all night. But like, when was the last time you heard of a AAA game anywhere that released that was bug-free? Like, even Destiny had problems. Nintendo games. Nintendo are, uh, games are the exception. Yeah, people say, oh, people yeah. always talk about how Nintendo games are the exception to this year's really um, like this year's glut of of technically challenged AAA games. I'm surprised. Were there any technical issues with the relaunch of GTA? On the new generation consoles? 
I think they've always had people mad at them for um, not delivering on promised multiplayer features. Like the heists. Dude, yeah. That was something that was shown in one of the um, original trailers of, of Grand Theft Auto Online like mm-hmm. a year and a half ago. And they're scheduled to finally implement that feature upon release of the PC version a, a year and a half. I, I'm guessing it'll come out in early 2015, which I guess tacks on another two months um, of the game's actual launch. It's, it's crazy how uh, many things don't really come out that are in the trailers. Mm-hmm. Uh, a good example is Dragon Age Inquisition. Remember those dynamic events that they had going on? Those dynamic uh, choices that they had? If you watched the beginning trailers, mm-hmm. like, oh, you'll see this change happen within the world. None of that is in Dragon Age Inquisition. Mm-mm. None of it. Like the whole big old long demo that they had. And you'd like, you start to wonder, like, hold up. Are people remembering? Because I sure enough didn't remember. Someone pointed it out to me. Well, you're, like, you're also in the minority, though, who's, who's like, watching that kind of preview and then actually going out and yeah. buying it. You are, like, the super hardcore fan. The the average consumer, I would say, like, 90%, 5% of the people who are buying the game are right. the people that are, like, watching on television. They see that, that <laughs> commercial and they'd be like, oh, look at that game. There's there's wizards and dragons. It's I'm going to cool. go buy that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, Most people don't really care. Most people mm-hmm. just go to the store and buy the game. You know, we're like, uh, this whole community that we have here that always looks up news and is mm-hmm. actually inform- an informed gamer compared to the guy who just goes to the store and says, oh, this is a really cool cover. I'm going to buy this. Yeah, the guy yeah. behind the counter said this was great. Uh, My buddy right. said this was awesome, you know? Did you guys exactly. read Ken Levine's really, really painful blog post about why... Levine? <laughs> Ken Levine? Uh, Levine, Levine, Levine. <laughs> tomato, tomato. <laughs> I, th- I think Anyways, Levine makes him sound Bioshock a little bit more guy, exotic. Right? Yeah. Uh, wh- whatever the blog post was about how they had to design the bioshock infinite cover to like oh yeah <laughs> look dumber one. than what the game was actually gonna supposed be supposed to to yeah mm-hmm. and i guess they also did that with with the bioshock cover like I, I don't a very um kind of moody atmospheric game about digging through garbage and and shiny wet slimy hallways the cover of the game is like the big daddy punching through glass in slow motion mm-hmm. People people buy buy covers, believe it or not, according to you know AAA people marketing it and having to. Uh, make by that the compromise. way, some games I found this out today. Some games have alternate covers. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I think that's that really cool flip feature. Around. So yeah. Bioshock I think Infinite, Bioshock Infinite it, is one of them. Yeah. If you take it out, you take out the slip and you flip it over on the opposite side. It will have a cover instead of just like this writing. Yeah. And this is also in Mass Effect 3. It work, It still you, works with Dragon Age Inquisition. It's just not as exciting. Right, right. But no, <laughs> this one is like a full-on red cover no, in no. Uh, Bioshock Infinite. Like, it's a full-on red cover. In, they, in Mass they, Effect 3, they have Femme Shepard on the opposite side. The same thing, just... Femme Shepherd. Femme Shep's way better than male Shep anyway. I don't yeah, know why. I, we I'm going were to play talk- through the whole game with Femme Shepherd next time I play. We, we were actually I, talking about this offline. I don't know why, but Bioshock, or yeah, Bioware games, I always play as a female. All of them. I'm, they just I'm seem more. It. I, I swear to God, their female voice, their female voice actors are just better than their male ones. It, it's weird because. It's it's like who do I romance? Because now, now we're going into the age where <laughs> you have where to think about it a little harder. Is like, you know, you know how in in a game, mostly in Bioware games, every everyone's bi, so you can just r- romance them no matter what. Right now, everyone is they're, they're real characters now. You know, some of them are they're gay, a bit more picky. some of them are lesbians. I didn't, you know, I didn't get a chance to romance anybody. I played through. Yeah, it. you just I didn't. Just, like, why? Wah, why? Wah, <laughs> There's no point. You might as well just play the game. I like, got shot just, down. <laughs> oh, oh, I did. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't make was it. it. Who did you try to romance? I tried to romance Sarah, the uh, the blonde elf archer girl. But you're you're a woman. She's she only likes women. I know. You got shut down. Still shut down. Or at least I couldn't like carry on the conversations oh. enough to like get to that point. So I was like, oh, hmm, how about that? Just just. <laughs> That that antisocial gamer tendencies know, are are bleeding Ooh. over into the virtual world. They are. They are. Oh man. That, that could That's actually so... get me on a whole other topic about Bioware romance things, but about like it, how they they don't feel like real romances where you're just like, okay, I just have to have my character act like their character, and then they'll like me. You know, there's no. It's not like a real. Is is it like the first game where you can just like give them a dog bone and they'll love you? No. Oh, no. No, this is a little bit more complicated. You don't even get a, a 
um, you approval just slide scale. The gift yeah. into you their don't gift even have slot. approval scale. Like you just have to. Yeah, go ahead. There, I was gonna say there is a, like there is. It's not a scale like whereas before they actually had like a scale to show you. I did notice that uh, each character when you go into a new level, like you pick which cards of the characters you want to go as. So like everybody has a specific card, and my character card of Sarah. Her picture changed when she went from, like, normal Sarah to, like, I think I was getting further in the relationship. Because, like, she went from, like, just an archer girl with her bow to something a little bit more lewd where she's, like, holding the bow between her legs and she's, like, going, ah. So, um, I, there is at least some type of sexy barometer there. Right. It's just not Sexometer. A sex- <laughs> it's just not as uh. accurate. So, this oh, yeah. is the regular cover. Mm-hmm. When you flip it over, it's Fem Shepherd instead. Yeah, Fem Shepherd. Check that out. So, I thought um, the way they did it with Bioshock Infinite was really clever, where they um, had a community vote on like the irrational forums mm-hmm. about which alternate cover the fans would like instead. Yeah, and it looks cool. It's all yeah. red. And- there were some good ones. Mm. Did, did they make them available? I thought they made them available for like at least people to print out or something like that. Like the ones that didn't. Uh, no, win. I thought I, I thought they decided that that would be the the flip cover oh. is what the fans voted on. Oh, what I'm saying is I think that the ones that didn't win the flip cover, I think they still like put online somewhere. I could be misremembering oh. where they, you could just print them out and be like, hey, you really like that one? Just print it out and cut it out and put it into the to the sleeve. And Maybe, but that's go. really tricky because you have to do it on like the glossy, flimsy paper yeah. in order to get the effect right. Like I remember when I was in high school, I tried to print out some classier game covers covers for my ps2 stuff and uh, they just ended up looking kind of sad <laughs> yeah you, you have to get the appropriate paper yeah. and yep. size you got otherwise they look kind of right. sad yeah what, what i've been wanting you have to, to go is... to kinko's for that shit yeah kinko's <laughs> oh my gosh is oh, wait do they still exist oh my god yeah one. kinko's still exist there if, if there's yes Yes. Wait, yeah. wait no are we talking fedex kinko's or just plain old kinko's, kinko's i think they're all fedex man. kinko's now I think they all. Oh, oh, they got bought by FedEx. Who is Kiko, and what what do they think of this the situation? (laughs) How they're slowly, slowly, and slowly, no one's coming to them. Everyone's just doing everything by themselves. You want you want a good looking game cover? You gotta go to Kinko's. Kinko's. Right, right, right. (laughs) They're not gonna be like a blockbuster (laughs) where they're just obsolete now. They're like closing down. No one comes to us anymore. <laughs> and until the the massive consumer revolution that is actually decent printers coming out at an affordable price level, there will be a market for Kinkos. Yeah. If, I need to get a printer, but I just, I'm just too... I couldn't tell you the last time I printed something. I got something. no time for that. Nobody got no time for that. <laughs> yeah, no, printers, printers are garbage. I don't know why printers are... A uh, hundred dollars to get every one of those nice glossy ones. Yeah, my coworkers... Every time have, I, like get off my little computer phone and and my little big computer tablet and my big fancy gaming computer and go to work on my printer it's like traveling back in time 20 years i have coworkers that are like what's a good printer sad. that i should buy and i'm like i don't, None. I don't know they don't exist yeah yeah why, why do you want to hand me something in paper send it to me an email so i can look at it on my magic you know hand computer please right you know anyway um anyway Video games. Video games. So, I mean, it kind of back to the whole topic of value and stuff like that. How different would you see video games compared to, say, like, board games? Whereas, like, you could, you'd be lucky to find Monopoly for, like, I guess under 20 bucks or something. Board games are remarkably expensive still. And even yeah, the old yeah. ones are still kind of expensive. Um, so well, they got to print. They got to go to Kinko's. They got to go to Tex Work. <laughs> Okay, and, and and that's that's also because of the whole different physical medium, you know, involved in it. Yeah, but, definitely. Like there are a shitload more middlemen involved in that than putting a game on Steam. But what about like with books? Books are also entertainment, and books can also now be bought in a, in a digital format, and and oftentimes bought super cheap as well. But like, well, you can also print out materials for board games and and try to replicate the same effect, but uh. But you yeah, you're paying for like the <laughs> art. Some of them have figurines yeah. and oh, yeah, all this yeah. crazy. Like like stuff. Cards Against Humanity, you can download the actual Cards Against Humanity and like clip them out on your little printer paper, but um, that hasn't hindered sales of the actual. But it, it's because of the material they're printed on and stuff. Right. Like you know, you can't really make that yourself. But I also think that they they hold they hold value. You know, I think yeah. people are always going to be buying Monopoly for the rest of our lives. I think people are always going to be right. buying, you know, some board game or another. Um, but 
what is really keeping video games from doing that? I mean, I know re-releases and stuff keep coming out, but with every re-release, it almost seems like the game keeps getting cheaper and cheaper. Like, where's the bottom value on some of these things? Some some games, if they were to come Oof. out today, like say, like say if Chrono Trigger came out today or Final Fantasy VI, I could if it was brand new on Steam in even in its current condition, I could see paying thirty bucks for it, maybe forty. Yeah, th- those those don't have. Like the ones that are highly acclaimed and a lot of people want them, yeah, it's all judged by that, because you could see some prices for like, for instance, uh, uh, Modern Warfare Four, for instance, um, that that Call of Duty always held their price. Like it's always like what, like I don't know, like maybe seventeen dollars. I saw it for something like that. Yeah, it- something like that. Like, and then you see all the other Call of Duties are like, you know, like eight dollars, seven dollars, and it keeps going down and down and down and down. It all de- I think it all depends. I for some reason I bought Naughty Bear um, because I wanted to review it and it's still eleven dollars. I have no idea why. Yeah, you would think that would you be like a, a two dollar bin somewhere, you know? Yeah, yeah, it, it's weird. And I, I was I'm I'm a fan of Gears of War, and I got Gears of War for ninety nine cents, and I'm like, <sighs> but the, the second one for ninety nine cents, but the first one was like uh, four dollars, and I'm like, the well, second one is how is this determined? Mm-hmm. Here's Here's a fun analog. I just, uh, yesterday, Steam, I'm, you know, cursed with, with this horrible fate of liking King of Fighters, right? <laughs> yesterday, uh, Steam put on a new listing for King of Fighters 98 Ultimate Match Final Edition is coming out for $12. So that's like one, it, it's from 1998. It is a re-release of a game from 1998 that came out on PS2 and I think like 2007 or 2008, way past the PS2's prime. And, um... Now it's re-released on Steam, but originally it is an enhanced version of a 1998 game, and they're deciding that the price for that kind of a niche appeal 1998 game, not a, not a you know mainstream classic, King of Fighters, mm-hmm. it's twelve dollars. So what what would Chrono Trigger be if they put it on Steam? Because Steam already has like a much um, lower price ceiling. I, for, would it I be think, as is or remastered? Either one. I, well, this is remastered. I, I bet it would be like really hard for them not to remaster, honestly, because they still have to like port it over to to PC if we're like talking about Chrono Trigger, yeah. like SNES games. Yeah. Yeah, and even then, like the stuff that they've been bringing over have been mostly 3D stuff that they've been kind of upscaling, like Final Fantasy VII's, the eights. Um, yeah. which I'm sad to see that they haven't done 9 or 12 because it was the 9 being right. awesome, 12 being right. needed to be re-released because of the horrible compression that was in that game. But, like, like Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy VI would need to be remade. But even then, when they remade 5 for the DS and released that on Steam, I think that was even, like, 17 bucks when it released, right? I'm looking at the Steam page for Final Fantasy IV right now, Four. Okay. and I don't know if this is a port... I port whatever. I don't know if this is a a like remake re-release of of a version based on the DS or the cell phone version, mm-hmm. but it is 15 no, it's $16. It's 15.99. That's how they get you. Um <laughs> and it looks bad. I would rather have pixel art than uh, than low poly 3D. Me too. Any day of the week. Uh, Any day of the week. I think that's Like it's oh so gosh. weird seeing a juxtaposition of this like really low poly 3d like 1998 or 7 quality 3d art next to high resolution text boxes i hate that Mm -hmm. oh i cannot stand that it it, it is a little bit of a it's a bit of a contrast that breaks your brain a bit it breaks your brain it doesn't fit the theme of the fidelity that they're going for you know, uh, pixel, art, uh, pixel art versus, like, early 3D stuff. I mean, early 3D stuff, it had to be gone through in order to get where we are. Baby steps and yeah. all that kind of stuff. But I remember, like, back in, back when uh, we were starting to make that leap into into 3D stuff and when Mario eBay was 64. really kind of picking up. I remember when I had my PC, I was going on to eBay when eBay was just picking up. And I was buying as many PC games as I could for a buck a piece. And I was getting, like, Neverwinter White Nights 1 and 2, or, or Neverwinter Nights and Icewind Dale 2 and all that kind of fun stuff for, like, you know, a dollar to, to, like, maybe three dollars a piece because they were past their generation, but still they were amazing games, you know? And I think I think we're definitely getting into a phase where gamers can do that again now, you know? I, I think, And they're going to do it again when they buy their current-gen consoles. Mm-hmm. Fun story. My Xbox 360 broke like xbox 360s are famous for doing 
Well, the old versions, yeah. You have that old yeah, and white. Yeah, I did. I did. I did have the old white version. The, and just the grumpy wait. old white version who is prone to to failure. Um, did we did we I, say I, how how it happened? I went over to play Bayonetta, and within right before five the cutscene starts, it just I was cuts so excited off. to show you Bayonetta <laughs> because you had just finished your Korra review. Oh, you do yeah. not know you do not know what a good platinum game is like. So I was like, "Come on, Matt, we're gonna play Bayonetta, so you can see why people really wanted Korra to be good." Yeah. And and literally, like you pressed three buttons, Bayonetta was flipping around on that clock tower, falling down in the netherworld scape, or whatever. I, I still don't know what the hell's going on in that story for most of the game. And um, <laughs> it just stops. It freezes, and then I turn it back on, and it 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 stops halfway through the bump. Oh. And uh, yeah, oh, when man. I get my Wii U, I'm going to actually pick it up off the floor and toss it in the garbage. I'm going to save the cables because maybe I'll get another Xbox later on down the line. Yeah, right. But I am literally going to have to just toss that thing in the garbage because I can play Bayonetta on a Wii U now at least. Well, put your hard drive um, out just for safety's sake. Just for safety's sake, I might. There's nothing of value on it, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> although maybe whenever I do get another Xbox to replace it, I can skimp on the hard drive and get it cheap. I, I don't know. But anyways... Yeah, but- what I'm really afraid of is not being able to play the Metal Gear Solid 3 HD version. That's one of my favorite games ever. It's one of my favorite... It, uh, it breaks my heart to even think about it. It is one of my favorite games ever, and it is a damn good remastering of it. Like, one of the finest examples of how to remaster something for HD. And I think... Basically, like, Nintendo is like, hey, you like Bayonetta? Come into our warm, flowing bosom over here on the Wii U. We'll take good care of you. (laughs) And Konami is like, hey, you like Metal Gear? Fuck you. (laughs) Go fuck yourself. You're going to have to buy a new console, and you're going to have to wait for a re-release of the re-release. Because... How am I going to play Metal Gear... If my Xbox broke, and if I'm, I've gotten myself used to the superior HD version, I don't want to play through it on a PS2 now that I know I can do it in HD on an Xbox yeah. at, at 60 frames per second on 720p, which is, like, pitiful, but at least it's better than the PS2. And, I, oh, God, it breaks my heart, because I'm going to have to, like, get a PS4 and rebuy the, the HD collection re-release. Like if they re-release the Metal Gear Legacy Collection re-release, uh, that's like the only affordable way I can see coming out of it. It just kind of breaks my heart that after this this holiday Thanksgiving Black Friday shopping spree, I'm seeing that like the one way to like maintain a a gaming hobby in an affordable way as a low income person is ironically by doing it through PC. Yeah. Yeah, which everybody four hundred dollars for six items. That's, that's, that's just bleh. yeah. And and when that Metal Gear Solid HD re-release re-release comes out for for the next next gen, I guess current gen now it's gonna be sixty dollars when it when it first launches. They'll they'll put in some some tax. I don't know. It might not be. It might be thirty dollars. But still, I I already bought that. I'm just not allowed to play it on my current machines. Can I? I'm sorry if I'm, like, going off on this really depressing rant. Depressing, an- another depressing bullet point to add to that list is what they're doing with the GameCube adapter. I cannot tell if Nintendo has drastically underestimated demand for the Wii U GameCube controller adapter, or if they are, like, deliberately holding back on production to drive up demand for the Wii U Pro controller. Because they immediately sold out of their first run of it so they made a second run that came in on on uh november 26th i think yeah that sold out immediately again and i guess the next one's scheduled for december 4th i hope i buy it you literally have to be refreshing that amazon page yeah. the minute it happens i think i think they're underestimating just, their their market uh, at the moment i, I mean, would i would hope because it th- they stand to make a whole lot more money selling three Wii U Pro controllers per copy of Smash uh-huh. than one twenty dollar GameCube adapter per copy of Smash. The other thing is like if they miss if they miscalculated how much demand there was going to be at launch, then it's going to take them even longer to reproduce more and you know to even replenish that first amount because they probably were like okay this is going to last us for three months or something and have their next run come out. But if they sold out like instantly, then they're then they're dry for a while. 
it, it kind of calls to mind to the the PlayStation Eye or the camera mm. for the yeah. longest time. I don't even know if you can still get it now, but for like eight months after that thing came out for the PlayStation Four, you couldn't find that thing anywhere. You could walk into a, a Best Buy or a, or a, a, a GameStop or wherever you might have to get stuff. At least you could live without it. Yes, you could live. You yeah. could live without it. But I mean, there's an example. Of I can't them live not without this GameCube adapter. I know. <laughs> Like, they think it's a super niche product that only the competitive hardcore players are showing, but, like, the the speed with which it sells out mm-hmm. is showing that the mainstream market wants it. Mm-hmm. They want to reuse their old controllers. Nintendo does not want them to reuse their old controllers. And that is such an evil corporation thing to do that it just like breaks my heart give it two months mad cats will come out with a cheap version of it <laughs> you know but then it's a mad cats version that you're gonna have to rebuy when it breaks five minutes after the first year <laughs> mad, Cat, mad cats has proven or, or is mad now, cats remember? yeah oh that's right mad cats is supposed they're to a have legitimate a, a, business a, a, now a turn around at this point <laughs> they're legit they used to be like real shady gangsters that's how now they they're legitimate <laughs> they, they that's, that's how you start off you start off i've real, gone Legit the cheap officer. stuff, people buy it, it breaks, you know, they go back to GameStop. No one oh, wants my to control, play with my the Mad Cat's controller, controller broke. It's okay, we'll give you the money back over and over and over again. And then all of a sudden, you know, they they made money and now they're legitimate now. You it know? angers me. <laughs> <laughs> that even brings up though a point where like, you know, we were talking earlier about your your uh, uh, Metal Gear three uh yeah. love and, and having yeah. to wait for re releases. That's kinda why yeah. I'm like, people always complain about, oh, we're just getting rehashes of old games and stuff. I kind of don't mind if we keep getting rehashes no. of them. As long as... As long as they're priced reasonably and that they are good rehashes. Yep. Yep. And as long as they're the company that's doing it isn't expecting to make it, like, a multi-platinum re-release of it. As long as they're not banking on this thing. Yeah, to... no. Don't remake it. Just re-release it. Yeah. It... Like, like the concept of the Master Chief collection, like, regardless of how it's executed, like, that's that's a great idea. Like, literally just upgrade the graphics and nothing else. And last gen, I'm also worried that it might be good HD remastering might be a thing lost in the past on the next, next, on the current gen, I mean. Mm-hmm. Because last gen was a great time to do it because, um, sixth gen games look really, really good when you blow them up into HD. Mm-hmm. Because, like, because of the limitations of their hardware, they had to make texture work really clean and, um, solid and, and, like, paint a concise image on on any given frame you were looking at like if you blow up the old silent hill games or um like final fantasy 12 is a great example metal gears metal gear solid 2 and 3 look great in hd but they might um i guess in the in the current gen like think there might be less of a demand for that product because they already sold them last gen and also think that that look might be behind the curve at this point in time and want to go the uh, Master Chief Collection route and redo all the assets, which takes a whole lot more time and money. Yeah. And and they could also fuck it up if they do that, because, I mean, just increasing the resolution, that's that, that's that's foolproof almost. Yeah, that's sometimes all it, all how, it takes. How do you fuck that up? Yeah. <laughs> that's sometimes all it yeah. takes is just increasing the resolution on the damn thing. It, it works perfectly and, for Valkyria Chronicles. I mean, there's a perfect example of it. When they, oh, the PC version? Mm-hmm. Yeah, people are loving it. I mean, the yeah. the, the cutscenes, which were pre-rendered, you can't really do anything about that. They're in 720p and, you know, grainy, compressed, early PS3, what they thought they could do with the hardware. But, you know, the, the gameplay is, is fantastic Ooh. from what I hear. I, also, shout-outs to the new PC version of Resident Evil 4. Oh, did you like that? They did a, they did a good one. Yeah. yeah. I played... Like, it's really weird. Oh, oh I was going to say, I played, like, halfway through it, and then I had to stop to, to continue on with something else. But go, go, go. Like, there's some really subtle differences that aren't an objective improvement. Like, uh, the new the new frame cap at 60 makes some of the QTEs easier than they're supposed to be at 30 frames per second. <laughs> and, and also, there are some animations that they, like, didn't bother to remake. Like, when you reload the the Red 9, or the whatever they call the Garand rifle. Yeah. Um, like... <laughs> it's it's kind of funny actually i kind of appreciate it because it's just fun to poke at like that animation is suddenly way choppier than everything else happening in the environment <laughs> but it's it's still it's still a good and uh-huh. I, I think they uh did an okay job of increasing the resolution on that one but when they know resolution it- is drastically higher textures are just slightly crisper that's like that's that's how the curve should go when they re-released that though they weren't asking full price for it It was 20 bucks right oh yeah yeah, yeah 20 bucks i'd say definitely you know, you know a good way 
to to satisfy me would be Konami to put Metal Gear Solid Three out on PC. I would love that. I'm surprised that they. I would adore that. It would be amazing if they just did a hey, we're gonna do uh, whatever the next one is, Metal Gear. I have a a rock stuck in my head. Um, if they did like hey, we're also gonna do two and three and uh, four HD versions on PC as Ooh. part of as part of the, the collection. collector's edition collection the legacy collection yeah yeah that was a good deal on on ps3 for while it was around i just hate that i have to buy that same thing again <laughs> some games um, some games i don't mind rebuying uh it's the same thing with uh, kingdom hearts kingdom hearts yeah. had so many re-releases of the same remix editions over and <laughs> over and over again and my friend is just, just like capcom he keeps it. buying them all uh-huh. over and over again i'm like dude uh. This is what crazy. was that um that Dead Rising DLC they released during uh during E3? It was oh, the I... Super Ultra Dead Rising Three Arcade Remix Hyper Edition EX Plus Alpha Prime Edition. I love Amazing. that they poke them poke, poke fun of themselves there. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Um. Yeah. So I I guess overall, we're, we're saying. Don't buy new games. Just don't. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking it back, but yeah. I mean, we'll still review new games and recommend, like, yeah, we really like that game. But I, I, I don't think I'd ever buy a new game if if I wasn't reviewing games. If I stopped reviewing games today and I went back to my life as a normal civilian, I don't think I would buy brand new games ever again. I think for me, um, it depends on the game. It depends if I need it in my life now. I w- you yeah. You're never gonna need it in your life. Be- it's a video game. There because I have games. such a backlog that I don't need to buy new games. Mm-hmm. You know? Exactly. I I don't need to. But if it's, it's something it's, it's I want to item. play right now, um, I don't know if any of these I would buy new that I've reviewed recently. Maybe Inquisition. Maybe I would have gotten it early. But that's because I'm a big Dragon Age fan. Mm-hmm. It would be but the ones that you're like definitely a fan. That's the of. only thing. Yeah, it would be the ones that you're like a huge fan of. Like I know I would probably do the next Bethesda open world game, whether it's Fallout or, or Skyrim. Right. I would probably right. do the I'm, next I, I, GTA because it's gonna be probably good. And and you know what? Even if it's not gonna be great, it's gonna be one of those experiences that I'll I will probably enjoy, in spite of whatever flaws it has. Right. Like Fallout Here's my games. my issue. This is why I can't do that. Why can't you do that? I'm a bigger fan of having money <laughs> <laughs> than I am of, of having really and, and so going you're out saying with friends you would and eating never nachos. ever buy brand new games. You you would just No, I didn't before Bunny Hop and it was great. I would buy them three months down the line and I would also black out games media. Yeah. Like I would just read message boards, but I would I had a like clear policy of not watching trailers, mm-hmm. of not reading reviews, of just kind of like going with the flow of the um after release reception. Like if a lot of people were talking shit about it, that would be a red flag. If a lot of people weren't and if it looked like it was something interesting, what, twenty dollars on a Steam sale, why not? Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't know what I was getting myself into. It would all come as a surprise. It would all be a pleasant surprise. The, the game would work. It would be all patched up. It wouldn't have AC Unity eyeball faces. It would um, perform well. You would have a wiki of, of like fan solutions to any weird problems that might happen. And also, like best of all, like just not even knowing what it looks like means that like literally every single moment of playing it is a surprise. And, and I feel like that's something people who um, are heavily invested in games media miss out on is the experience of just having a game take them completely and a hundred percent by surprise. Yeah. And then it's beautiful to add on to that. Even if you, even if you waited for them to patch everything out and even if you waited for the game to go down in price, if the game was a good game and it ended up like spawning some good DLC for it, you're probably going to find like a game of the year edition for probably half oh, the yeah. price. Oh yeah. Like for instance, um, the complete edition, the complete edition dishonor, which implies that, the, the one <laughs> earlier was incomplete anyway which oh that actually kind of i, I <laughs> wanted to go off on another little tangent Oof. but dishonored was a good game and i thought that its dlcs were actually very good too but you know obviously when you do the dishonored full package it's going to be better but uh this kind of ties in a little bit i th- i liked titanfall titanfall was a fun game and i typically don't like multiplayer shooters much i i think that um it, t- it takes a really special multiplayer shooter for me to really enjoy it i enjoyed that 
Um, Titanfall came out like what six months ago? Something like that. Yeah, January, I think. January, which would be so almost twelve months. Should ago. be eleven months. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, God, I thought it was over the summer. Uh, that it was came it out. really January? Okay, so anyway, it, less than a year ago. March. Okay, so it was yeah. early, yeah. early okay. springish. All right, so mm-hmm. I was wrong. Well, less than a year ago. If you go on to Origin, they at least had a sale on it where like fifty percent off. It, no, it was more than fifty percent off for the base game. I think it was like five bucks. Or you could buy, like, the, um, or maybe it was 15, I don't recall. But then there was, like, the full version with all the DLC and crap that they came out with it for $20. Which just, <laughs> it, it, it made me want to, like, rage because I enjoyed the game and I thought to myself, yeah, I might go back to that. And, you know, it, it just made me rage so hard that less than a fucking year after the game came out, the, the full version of it came out for $20. You know, here's this big oh. EA game. All of its DLC. So I should wait. 20 bucks. That's, that's the moral of today's story, kids. Just wait. Don't immediately buy every new video game that comes out for full price. Mm-hmm. In the terms of shooters, though, I will say this. This is, this, is, this is kind of the sad reality with shooters. People don't stick around in shooters. They don't They don't stick around with what's what's tried and You're true and what's multiplayer? great. Yeah, with multiplayer. They don't stick around with, with what's tried and true and what's great. They'll stick around with whatever's newest. And the guys that I have, I have faith in them, and the other the other half of the people that the ones that do stick around, you know, either a lot of them are like super ingrained into the game and they play it so well that you probably aren't going to stand a chance in in hell. Well, like Counter Strike Go came out in 2011, mm-hmm. and and like Counter Strike's always been the weird exception, but it's always what's given me hope. <laughs> like ever since 2011, that game's player base has actually been increasing. Mm-hmm. I I think that is a big exception to the rule. don't and never seem to ever will abandon Counter-Strike. Like, there are standby multiplayer games that are just not going to go away over the better course of, like, a decade. And, like, TF2 (laughs) might be one. I guess that's free now, so you don't really got to think about it. Counter-Strike, any version of Counter-Strike is one of them. And, um... I mean, some people still play the old Call of Duty. Some people still play the uh, old Gears of War. Some people still play the old Halos. Guess what happened to me the other night? What? I wanted to play some Call of Duty Advanced Warfare 5, five whatever. Whatever the new one that just, just came out that you I can't actually remember did the name, really huh? Yeah, fancy. Yeah. Is it Advanced Warfare? Yes, yeah. Advanced Warfare. Yeah, so is. Call of 47 Gigabytes Advanced Wars. Um, <laughs> I wanted to play some of it, and no one was online. The game just came out. Uh-huh. Are you on the serious? PC version, yeah. the PC version after 4 a.m. And now I'm like revealing what a shitty sleep schedule I had Gosh. a week ago. But the PC version of Call of Duty Advanced Warfighter, Advanced Warfare after um, it's because Advanced Warfighter was that Ghost Recon game. Anyways, um, it's a graveyard after 4 a.m. Mm-hmm. Like unless you <laughs> can can squeeze into the one current lobby going around, and and that also brings up a whole other issue with the P2P netcode, which is horrible as well. But people have actually not latched on to the new freaking Call of Duty game, mm-hmm. which should be like a reliable multiplayer experience, no matter what day it is, until like at least two years after launch. That actually goes back even a little bit to the oversaturated market I thing as well, because like. They're they're spoiled for choice. They're spoiled for choice, well, and and you know what? This... I think I did load up Counter Strike when I learned when I saw that I couldn't find a match. What's really sad is I because I will in Counter Strike. You guys probably get these emails. Like I'll get emails from like indie developers, and they'll be like, "We created this online multiplayer game," and I'm like, "I'm sorry, I gotta stop oh. you right there. Like you could have the oh, world's yeah. greatest online multiplayer game, but you're never gonna get the the audience for it. You know." And unless you like sell out super hard, and you will probably not. I, I shouldn't say never, because obviously there's going to be exceptions to the rule. But like, if you're an indie developer and you want to make a game that's going to be making you money, don't make a multiplayer game. You could you could be making the best multiplayer, most fun multiplayer game. I could love it, but unless everybody is playing it, nobody's playing. There's, yeah, there's I've one. seen some. Ooh. And you, 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 have you seen Trove? You know, it's kind of mm-hmm. like no. Cube World, ish. No, it's by the I've same people. Um, oh, man, it's by the same Cube people. Cube World, did they ever finish that? No, <laughs> he fell off the face of the earth, okay? All right. He sold his money, and he, lo- he took so long to update his game that everyone just didn't care anymore. It's like, the shame, next man. video he came out with got no views, no nut. Like, no one cares about oh. it anymore. It's so sad oh, to oh, see oh, that. Uh, 
it's so sad. And Trove now, like, I'm getting all these emails. Oh, you're come and play in the beta. And I'm like, it's a multiplayer game. And it's it's like Cube World, but, you know, it's different, right? You know, like, what, pretty much everything is just like, <laughs> oh, it's this, but it's different. There's so come play. one I really wanted to try called Screen Cheat. Have you guys heard of Screen Cheat? Nope. No. It is a, a multiplayer shooter that is um, designed to recreate the golden years of playing GoldenEye or Perfect Dark or mm. local Halo before it was online, where screen sheeting was a big problem, where you would look at the other player's screen to know where they are and get the drop on them. And so they made all players invisible and, like, focused on making trap weapons and stuff. I have heard about that, yeah, and it encourages you to watch the other player's screens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's how you have to find out where they are so you can win the game. And, like, it sounds like such a great idea. It sounds like they could really have have a wide-open new world of of ways to experiment and put a spin on the old multiplayer FPS (laughs) uh, formula. But local (laughs) FPS shooter multiplayer, it's, it's... I don't know. Maybe they have a version set up online where you see the other online players' screens. Maybe that's how they can do it. But even then, like... As you just Some said, on that's, live that's technology an extremely there. small market. Yeah, they would stream the other player's video into a little corner of your screen right. so you could screen treat, screen cheat <laughs> through the web. <laughs> Truly, we're living in the future where we can recreate the errors and the problems of not being online. <laughs> online. Amazing. What an age we live in. Yeah, it's like <laughs> video games that have lens flares and and <laughs> shaky cam motion blur. It's 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 like you're recreating the problems of something that you'd no longer have to deal yeah. with. JJ yeah. Abrams. Yeah. Well, that was a good discussion. I liked that. Yep. Should we should we should we round this bad boy out with our thoughts on the Star Wars trailer, or should we just let Sleeping Dogs lie? So, Yo, man, fuck the Star lightsaber, Wars. right? <laughs> What the deal with that? What it's the heck it's is like this? an exhaust port, or is it like something you bash the other guy with the hilt? You have a lightsaber, you don't have to. What if somebody's lightsaber just... slides down? Isn't it just going to chop that little like blade guard right the hell off? What's next? Light nunchucks? Are they getting? They're getting away with murder. That's, oh my idea. god! I feel like the the no, guy's going to lose his fingers. Idea. All right, lose yeah. his fingers is like, oh, I'm going to grab this real quick. Oh, and he just wh- his fingers gone. That's it. It's gone. Oh, oh, yeah. No, no. Like, like our childhoods are ruined. Yeah. Western civilization, as we know it, is collapsing. Take all your money out of the banks. Just hide it under the bed. Civilization is collapsing. Watch. You're gonna jump, see Luke jump just off bust the out into song. He's gonna start singing like he's on here. Broadway, right in the middle of the movie, Could be movie a theater. Jedi tonight. Yeah. Well, it, it, <laughs> it's gonna be just like that Connect Dance game. After the first 20 minutes, the movie is going to turn into a let's play of Star Wars Connect. That's the best you can hope for. There's going to be so there's going to be like first person shooting from the point of view of a stormtrooper. I guarantee it's going to happen in the movie. Who can't aim? Oh, did you guys uh, get into the Jedi Knight games back in the day? Oh, yeah. 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 There was there was a cheat that allowed you to take control of the enemy stormtroopers. I don't remember this. And when you pressed it when you pressed left click to shoot your stormtrooper gun, the accuracy cone was literally like oh what should be a shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a cheat. Uh, that's hilarious. The Jedi Knight games had like such great cheats. There there was it was like enable underscore gore space one hundred yeah. where walking into a stormtrooper with your lightsaber would cause them to just burst apart at every breakable part. I do remember that. I, I put always put the dismemberment <laughs> oh, so up fun. to the max and stuff on those. Yeah, it was just dis- I think it, dis- it was either like gore underscore enable or dismemberment enable yeah. something like I think that. It was gore. And and you could enable it to degrees, so you could be tasteful about it. You know, gore disable forty was was a little a little more grisly than the default value, where where occasionally getting an arm was a treat, but but once you turned it up to ninety nine, the game became a comedy. If you turned it up to ninety nine and played as a stormtrooper, <laughs> oh my god! It was it was like you could just play yakety sax in the background and go nuts. Uh, but yeah, fuck Star Wars. Yeah. Star Wars is dead. Yeah. Forever. <laughs> it's still gonna be one of those things where I will. I don't think I'm gonna go see it in the theaters. 
Um, really? I yeah, I really don't think so. Yeah, it, I dude, was actually a like, lot more. Roll the dice, man. Just gamble with your life. No, gamble. Not, gamble dude. with your eighteen dollars. No, dude, movies. Yes. I was actually. <laughs> I was more like excited for Star Wars before this teaser. Me too. Because the last we saw of it was J.J. Abrams like hanging out in the desert with props. Mm -hmm. And and this trailer is All like... CGI. <laughs> it, it looks CGI. Like if it is props, they might as well not be. Because mm -hmm. I guess it, it's such a different time that we're seeing it in. We're also seeing it in, in the like now nullified expanded universe which really tricked me out i went on a twitter tirade about it about how this movie is is geared to evoke nostalgia of of seeing those long lost relics of 70s star wars universe again but i realized when i was watching this trailer that it just looked like a video game to me like that stuff has never gone away because i've always been into the star wars games mm -hmm. when i see the millennium falcon swooping upside down and and flying across the desert it doesn't really look like the Millennium Falcon to me. It looks like a YT-1300 Corellian freighter. There are like three of those in the games I've played that, that all do the same trick. They're like, ooh, it's the Millennium so Falcon So what's the now? problem with and CGI then, and then using props? Uh, yeah, isn't it really not? Yeah, it's just gotta be done tastefully, whereas like this was th literally, I, I'll, I'll say these two things. First, I when I watched that trailer, I couldn't help but think of like, wow, this this really feels a lot like when I saw the original episode one trailer, like quick flashes of CGI stuff, no real content at all, you know, just there and and like, woo, new Star Wars, and there's a lightsaber at the end. That's exactly how it felt. What the uh, second thing, talking about how it like related to video games, um, <laughs> th there was that frame where um, George froze up by the way so and he yeah, looks totally apathetic he, he froze up in one of these faces it's so great but it is it is like the perfect frame of george but so um i can't look at him so when when the uh, the stormtrooper pops up and he's looking all panicked and he doesn't have his helmet on that that the frame of that shot looks just like the frame they used for like every conversation in Knights of the Old Republic video games. Oh. It looks like one to one, like that exact same two thirds right. angle. Like I, I could just need a little dialogue option yeah, to pop yeah, up. Just like the three choices <laughs> of what do you want us gonna say? Like oh shit, or or I'm sorry, I shouldn't be swearing. Oh no, <laughs> or where did the droids go? You know. Can you guys hear yes, me? Oh, there we you. go. Oh, he unfroze it off was, of the face. So wait. We're not supposed to swear. Uh, well, I've just I know, been, right? <laughs> I've just been trying to be a little bit, little bit tasteful, a little bit. And then, oh and no! And then Wee Man over here is just like mother. <laughs> what? Oh no! I've ruined everything. Dude, really? I. This is we. We may curse. I don't care. I'm just trying to not be a sailor. <laughs> I've ruined everything. But still, George, your face was freaking perfect the way it was uh -oh. I, ha I uh -oh. had to do this to uh -oh. not see you. Technical issues now. Now Randy's gone. I know. I He's was like I'm, this. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm hearing. Oh, I'm there hearing he is. He's back hints now. Hints of speech. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, maybe that. Maybe that's a good cue for us to to kill it. To kill it. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's because we're talking shit about Star Wars. <laughs> the, the force. Lucas is, is like, shutting the us fan down. Boys no, sorry, are Disney already... is shutting us down. <laughs> Yeah, the fanboys are already DDoSing our servers because they heard us talking shit about Star Wars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this was fun. Guys, thanks, yeah. for, thanks for hopping back on to do this. Yeah, no problem. It was fun. I relish any opportunity I have to talk shit about Star Wars. Before we, before we actually do sign out, um, I, I think George is above my head, but I can't remember the way out, layout. George, uh, what, what videos did you release? Really what, what, where are they going to go when they click on your head? Um, this week I did Far Cry 4, which you also did. I'm afraid I might have been, I don't, I don't know, maybe too hard on it because it was fun. It's just like the most interesting thing to talk about it are the similarities with the last game, of which there are a mm -hmm. lot. I also did this War of Mine, Ooh. which was a lot of fun, actually. It, it was, you know, like a depressing, no, no, it was Feel the Feels game that like ironically was, is one of the rarer depressing Feel the Feel games that is actually also fun to play. So it's like if the if the depressing feel the feels motif doesn't work on you, you're like at least gonna get invested in in some really challenging, really rewarding gameplay that is there whether you like that stuff or not. Yeah, cool. Uh -oh. I, that game looks amazing. Yeah. Somebody was telling me about just the the inner dialogues and the inner stories that are created within that game that that you know really mm -hmm. aren't done in other games. So I'm I'm a it does it does a good job of of like not only just having good gameplay but also contextualizing it in a really interesting way. Cool. Cool. Matt, what about you? Where where are they going if they click on your head? 
Um, you're gonna see all the Dragon Age videos uh, that I put oh, out from, yeah. and I played all of them from one to two to three. So you're gonna get like basically, I'm gonna remember everything and all the problems and what I hated and I disliked from all the other Dragon Age games, and I'm gonna just put it into one big video finale thing. And then um, I'm I just played Tales, uh, the no uh, Telltale game. Tell, tell, how do you pronounce tell, 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 yep, tattle, tell, right? I, I, for some reason, I always tell, hear people say it differently. Sonic and um, Tails, tell, tell, um, uh, Miles Prower, Tales from the Borderlands, I think it's called. I'm pretty sure it's called, yeah. Mm-hmm. I yeah. played that, and I think I'm gonna be doing something on that, even though it's kind of hard. Not, I don't know if there's a proper way. To really review a Telltale game, there's no, you there's know, no right like way. Yeah. You can't really show that much gameplay because it's spoilers and all this craziness. So I might do like a shortest video because I felt like it's one of the better Telltale games that I've played. Hmm. You know, their game of which is Thrones interesting one because is I did too. not like Borderlands at all. You know, I'm, hmm. I mean, I didn't like the story anyway. I like playing with friends. Yeah. So. That's interesting. So you might see that, and then I'm going to probably go back in the past and pick out a, a gem or not so gem and make a, a video of that, review of that. Cool. Cool. Yep. All right. And then if you click on my head, it's uh, probably going to go to the Dragon Age video review. Or wait, no, that's not going to be done yet. I'm still writing that. I'm actively writing that as we're doing this. Uh, so I think whatever I did last, Far Cry, which I liked. I liked it better than 3, but, you know, I hope they iron out the technical issues with 3 or 4. And otherwise, it'd be a really, really good game. That's it. Thanks for um, George and Matt and myself. Yeah, if if you can hear me, it was a lot of fun. Right. <laughs> we like we did to- we didn't hear the last like I don't know paragraph you just said. Just to let you <laughs> I, know, I, I, I love Star end. Wars. It was all a ruse. <laughs> <laughs> I fooled everyone, and I just explained the details of this plot that you all missed. Amazing. <laughs> See you guys. All right. Have a good night. Bye, everybody. Have a good week.